Hello, everyone. I just want to take this opportunity to uh, talk to you about um, Markdown. This is just simply a text file that can be uh, translated into other formats, particular HTML. But one of the questions that, that I run into uh, is what to do about tables, because tables seem to introduce a little bit more complexity into it. And, and so I want to talk about, first of all, simple tables. Um, simple tables work very well in Markdown, and that's what we'll talk about in this tutorial. Okay, so I want to create a simple table showing the showing the data on three New Testament books of the Bible. Very simple, three column table with uh, three columns of information or four columns of information if you count the head header. So what I would do, I mean, I've opened up a a new Microsoft Word document here, and I would usually go to insert uh, table, and then I would create the uh, the table. That was simple enough, right? So I would put here in the header part of the or the headings part of the table uh, book. Well, we put the book title and date, the approximate date, and author. And I noticed right away that I created too many columns, and so I want to, that happens a lot. So I want to highlight one of the columns, and I want to go to ask me so where is that? Is it page layout? Uh, no. Uh, is it design? No, I think it was in the layout. Well, yeah, there it is. The, the delete key. So I go to delete. And I want to make sure I don't delete the row because I would go across. I want to delete the column. Oops. Now the the uh, table is not proportionate to the page and so i like proportionate tables and how do i get back to proportionate to the page or in other words 100 percent width of the page and i look through here and i and i and i don't see oh yeah uh, that seems there it is auto fit oh i forgot i need to select the table first uh before i can do that and then i go to auto fit and auto fit no not auto fit the content auto fit the window and you notice Already, uh, my attention has gone off writing uh, to, and is, is now focused on finding the right buttons and the right uh, way to do things. And uh, so that's one of the problems with Microsoft Word. Um, it's, a, it's a program that uh, forces your attention on the program itself rather than on the task of writing a lot of times. And so anyway, but it was relatively easy. And let's put in here uh, first... Timothy, written about 62, or A.D. 62, author, of course, was the Apostle Paul, uh, and then we want to look at the book of Acts, and that was also written approximately A.D. 62, thereabouts, by Luke, the physician, and then I want to look at the book of Revelation, which was written approximately A.D. 96, if you take the latter date, and that was written by the beloved Apostle John. There you have it, a simple um, three-column uh, table, and that's basically all you would have to do in Microsoft Word. Easy, right? Uh, yes. However, let's suppose that uh, with this document, you also want to publish it to the Internet uh, on a website. And so you want to translate this document into HTML code, which is what uh, websites use to display their information. So it's interesting that Microsoft does have the option of saving it as, a H as an HTML file, but it's a little bit hard to find. I would expect it to be under Save As. And by the way, this is uh, Office 2013, but I don't think it's much better in 2010 in this sense. But it's not in Save As. As you can see, uh, there's no nothing here that says Save As an HTML document. Uh, you could say, uh, actually, there's no way to change it here. But I think they've changed the vocabulary to export. So I want to export it. I notice it has ex created a PDF file. It has created an XPS document. But nothing here that says HTML. So I go to Change File Type. I look down through here and I notice that there is a mhtml and that must be Microsoft special html format so I have to select that and I click the save and training so I want to save it here okay um, how 
I want to name it something like simple. Remember, this is simple. Simple table. But then I notice if I open up here where it says save as type, there is a um, there is a, an HTML option down here. If I can, there it is. See that? Web page HTML HTML. So I want to choose that. And so then I click uh, Let's see, let's give this the name because I already have one here called Simple HT, Simple Table, which we're going to look at a little bit later. Uh, simple Table MS Word. There you go. This, uh, meaning that it was, this is what Microsoft Word created as a Simple Table HTML. Save it. Looks good. Of course, we're still in Microsoft Word here, but let's just uh, close out of Microsoft Word. In a in a text file. Let's close this. So yeah, because HTML files are basically text files. Um, simple table MS Word document. There it is, and voila! Look at all the code that Microsoft Word spit forth onto my computer. Look at that. All of this, and I'm going through it relatively quickly. All of this, and we're already at 494 lines of code for a three column, three row table. Isn't that amazing? Total code. Let's get to the bottom of this, and we're at. 864 lines of coding for a simple table. That's a little bit ridiculous, I think. And I would not want to uh, pass this document on to anyone else. So let's get rid of that idea. That's what happens when you try to do it with Microsoft Word. And so you end up with uh, a document that only works in Microsoft Word. Uh, but the document that you end up saving is not, if you, if you do it through Microsoft Word, is not very sociable, let's say it that way, to pass on to somebody else. So I want to look for a different option. So this is the way I would do it using a simple text file editor. And the one that I'm using here is called NoteTab Pro, which I highly recommend. It's been around for ages, and yet it still is excellent for writing text documents. And so, uh, again, looking at the, um, the three-column table, simple table, I would just write here, book, and then I would add a pipe symbol. That's the symbol on your keyboard right next to the right-hand bracket key. And after that, uh, I would put date, and then the pipe symbol again, and author. Hit return. I would underline book again, or uh, underline book, and then uh, space, and then the pipe symbol again. I'm sorry. I would underline book with the with the dash, not the underline. Uh, pipe symbol, and then underline date, pipe symbol, underline the word author, hit return, and so I would go first, Timothy, pipe symbol, AD62, pipe symbol, the Apostle Paul, Revelation, pipe symbol, AD62. I'm sorry, let's go, let's do this in order. Let's go Acts, pipe symbol A, D, 62. Pipe symbol Luke, return, and then we'll go to the book of Revelation, which was written last, A, D, 96. Pipe symbol, and that was John. And if I want to make it look a little nicer, it doesn't have to. This would work right here, what you see right here. But if I want to look, make it look a little more evened out. I push this forward so that it looks even with, uh, with the author column. So that's it. That is the, uh, that's all you'd have to do to create a 
uh, table. Now I know it's not pretty, but it's readable. And here's the thing, it can be converted then from this into several different documents. The nice thing about Markdown though is that it can be rendered in several other formats as well. If you're the one in your organization responsible for the final output, you will want to find a good Markdown editor such as the one in this screen. This is an excellent Markdown editor for Mac called ByWord. Notice how you can send this simple text file to HTML, PDF, RTF, Microsoft Word, and a program called LaTeX. So again, you have a simple and very readable text file that can be formatted in many different ways. If you are not the one in your organization responsible for publishing the documents, then you don't even have to worry about having a markdown editor. All you need is a plain text editor like Microsoft Notepad, which comes with any Microsoft Windows installation, or my favorite, Notetab Pro. Okay, so I want to show you what the code looks like when you do uh, transfer or, or translate a, a markdown document, text document, into HTML. Uh, and so I'm going to, I've already done that. I've already made the transition. So I'm going to open it up here. Uh, it's just an HTML file and this is the output of uh, a markdown file which again is just this simple text file when it is rendered as an HTML and look at the difference between this and what Microsoft Office did that's it 52 lines of code is much different than 800 and whatever it was lines of code that we got with Microsoft Office much simpler and yet at the same time if I open up Firefox and then open that same file and I look for it here it is a an HTML file simple table open that up and look at that that what that looks like uh, the same thing just as good as the Microsoft Office file and yet at the code is much more uh, concise and much more readable and easy to pass on to somebody else. And not only that, but as I mentioned earlier, the, um, the, the, the markdown file can also be translated into uh, an RTF file or a PDF file or uh, several other different types of files and so what this amounts to is that you have a very simple text file that's readable in itself but can also be rendered into several other formats so I hope hope you uh, have enjoyed this video and I hope that uh, it encourages you to use markdown please visit the home site of John Gruber, the man who brought us the original Markdown concept and code uh, at daringfireball.net slash projects slash markdown slash syntax and also the site of Fletcher Penny who developed the extended version of Markdown called Multi-Markdown which is at fletcherpenny.net slash multi-markdown so um, it's been a pleasure to be with you during this uh, clip tutorial. Thank you. Uh, this has been a, a, um, a tutorial of Mid-South Christian College, and I encourage you to visit their website. And also, if you have any questions at all, just uh, write me at uh, Greg Waddell at MidSouthCC. <laughs>